Hello and welcome to another Diecast Resto Siku restoration. I'm Jason and this is the V302 Mercedes 280 SL. These castings were produced from 1969 until 1974 in the cream colour this would have originally been in, and in silver from 1975 until 1984. This one is in a real state of disrepair. It is missing the front passenger seat, but that's not the end of the world. Thankfully, the windscreen is in complete, albeit completely cloudy and scratched condition. It is terribly dirty, and it's got hardly any paint remaining at all. The metalwork is in very poor condition, as is the base and exposed chrome work. The wheels look to have rusted on the axle ends as well. So this is a good condition example of the V302. And this is a real life W113 Mercedes Benz 280 SL. The 280 SL's production run spanned 1967 to 1971. It was the final development in the production run of the W113 model range, which had launched in 1963 with the 230 SL, with the 250 SL following in 1967. You can see just how grimy with dried dirt the casting is now it's been cracked open. The grille and headlights are a separate detachable piece that should polish up nicely. I have to lever out the interior, which hasn't broken, that's just the detachable dashboard and steering wheel. The interior really is filthy and in need of a good rinse. Here's that dashboard piece that attaches to two metal protrusions inside the casting. The doors are held in place by the cast metalwork and secured by the plastic interior piece. And here's the cloudy window piece. There are some large gouges in the front that will likely need sanding away. Plenty of dried on dirt covering the original cream coloured paint inside. There are two rivet posts that keep the base attached. The W113 Mercedes is commonly referred to as the Pagoda, owing to its concave detachable hardtop. Its large grille featuring a dominating three-pointed star and its fishbowl headlights pay homage to the W113's predecessor, the 300SL Roadster W198. The car replaced both the W198 and the W121 190SL. This came after Mercedes technical director Fritz Nahlinger demanded a new car that would have greater performance than the 190, but carry less of a price tag than the exclusive 300. In 1960, development began on the car and design work was based on a shortened W111 Fintail sedan platform. It made its debut at the 1963 Geneva Motor Show with the 2.3 litre M127 engine. Production of the 230 ran until 1967 with just short of 20,000 vehicles produced. The 2.5 litre 250 SL was introduced at the 1967 Geneva Motor Show, though production had commenced in December of 66. It is the rarest of the W113 SLs, as production ran for just one year until January 1968. Just over 5,000 were made, including the 2 plus 2 California Coupe, which had no soft top, only a removable hard top, with a bench seat replacing the convertible roof compartment. The 280 replaced the 250 in December 1967, now featuring the 2.8 litre M130 engine with 168 horsepower. It was built until February 1971, when the new R107 platform launched. Of the 23,800 vehicles produced, more than half were sold in the US, with 12,927 ending up stateside. So now I've wet sanded and polished the yellow windshield piece, I focus my attention on the removal of the paint from the metalwork. My recording missed the initial wire wheel polishing, but you can clearly see the difference here. However, this model has been left beaten and abused for too long, as you'll begin to see the vast pitting that plagues most of the casting. Particularly bad is this right hand side. It's absolutely peppered with divots. It will take so much work to get this looking remotely close to how it should look. 
In addition, the A pillar will need reattaching too, but that's the least of my concerns right now. The left side didn't escape the pitting, though it's in far better shape. Meanwhile, I brush over the base to remove any last dirt remnants that washing with a toothbrush may have missed. The grill mercifully has escaped any damage, but the doors have minor pitting evident on the outsides. To try and recover this casting, I begin by sharpening and flattening some of the edges, like along the front of the bonnet and the door sills. I use my thick old humbrol filler and roll it over the entirety of the casting. Not a single panel escapes this treatment. The reef had pitting on all four sides around the edges, likely in places where the paint had chipped off first. But here is the model filled absolutely everywhere. I use the old glue and baking soda trick to reattach the detached A pillar, seeing as I had to leave the filler to dry anyway. I begin sanding by very harshly, maybe too harshly, rubbing the entire casting against some 320 grit sandpaper. So far it isn't looking a lot better. Again, I file down some of the rough and sharp edges, focusing on the glue that surrounded the A-pillar. Next up is a finer sandpaper, a 1200 grit waterproof type, before I go over it with a 2000 grit mesh disc. Now it is starting to look better, though a coat of primer will determine quite how successful the repeated filling and sanding has been. Of course the doors receive the same treatment. Now, as a bit of an interlude from my cast metalwork woes, I move on to polishing the relatively unscathed base with some autosol. This is often one of my favourite jobs when restorations have exposed metal bases. And even more so when little intricate attachments like this grill start gleaming again. Look at that, it's just superb. After wiping both parts down, you see how much healthier they look than when they were covered in dirt and detritus earlier on. Then I focus my attention on recovering the wheels with a fine metallic silver paint pen. Now though, it's time to coat the casting in primer. This coat was in fine primer however, which didn't cover over many of the imperfections, so in a minute, the casting will jump from white to grey. Even so, the thicker Tamiya primer still wasn't enough. The problem areas were filled using Vallejo's plastic putty this time, and it came out looking like a spotty teenager's face covered in acne cream. I might have gone a bit overboard, but we'll see how it turns out after another sanding and priming session. So to spare you the boredom, here's the casting post sanding round 2. Some areas are down to the bare metal again, like the wings, but crucially, the original humbrol filler remains. So here it is post third coat of primer, and I'm still not satisfied with the finish. It's still a bit lumpy in areas, and I've lost a bit of detail, particularly in that pimpled right hand side. So again, I use some 1200 grit wet and dry paper to sort out those areas I'm unhappy with. This is how it looked ahead of the fourth priming, hoping that this would be the last coat before paint. And it was. This is Tamiya's TS7 Racing White, that should emulate the original's cream colour rather nicely. It's really starting to come together now. Naturally, the doors are coated too. 
Annoyingly, the axles became very brittle and one snapped. So while I tried to fix it with glue, I also got some custom wheels for a Resto Plus alternative. These were coated in the same TS7 to attempt to match the colour coded hubs seen on the Real 280. They are actually VW wheels with the VW badge featuring in the centre. So I used my chrome pen to draw the three pointed star over Volkswagen's emblem. I thought these would look pretty authentic should my original Siku wheels fail me. What do you think? Now since the interior had faded, I decided to pep the tail lights up with some red highlights using a red sharpie. But now it is time to reassemble my collection of dodgy parts. The polished windscreen is placed in first of all. That is followed by the dashboard and steering wheel section. I hesitate as fitting the doors and interior is a fiddly job that kind of has to be done all at once. As you'll see after I fitted that shiny like new grille. So I tried to be smart and save some time by using the interior to hold the doors in place but I ended up removing the interior altogether. With the doors balancing precariously on either side, I then gently refit that big chunk of plastic. Lastly, the base with wheels attached is refitted, but then... Anyway, this is how the Siku V302 Mercedes 280 SL appeared when I found it. I think the state of it speaks for itself, and the pitting on paint removal made this one of my most difficult and ambitious restorations so far. Luckily, the main components were all present, but in serious need of cleaning and rescuing. This model came over to me from Portugal, and the dry, dusty conditions have done this casting no favours. But I tried my absolute best to restore it back to its former glory, and here it is now. Recoated in TS7 Racing White, with a smoothed window unit, polished metalwork, revitalised wheels, and cleaned from top to bottom. It has lost a bit of detail on this right hand side, but this was a necessary sacrifice considering how awfully pitted it was. The wheels are much fresher with Citadel and a metallic Uni Posca pen recovering them, and I managed to re-glue the broken axle again from earlier, though it is still quite fragile. At the end of the video, you'll be able to see the custom 3D printed wheels fitted that were brought in as a backup, though the rubber on them is a bit thin. That polished grille was my favourite part of this restoration, having cleaned up nicely after spending years shrouded in dust and dirt. Anyway, let me know how you think I did by hitting the like button and leaving a comment below. Check out my Patreon and Instagram for all the latest. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again for the next one. Bye for now.